chlorine is added to most water supplies and in, in certainly in North America. It's the, it's the uh, uh, front line of defense against microorganisms. Uh, and, and we'll discuss that there, there are other forms of chlorine used now. But chlorine, the next category of uh, contaminants is probably, I consider, the or, or one of the most serious that the average American is faced with. And this category is called disinfection byproducts. And it's, it's also a very new, new category, uh, probably less than, and been dressed for less than 20 years. And I, I just want to, uh, Robert, I just want to alert the listeners that this is really the key uh, a point and uh, this to listen very carefully because this is, for the most part, going to be new information for most people listening to this audio. And, and understanding the importance of this is, is quite profound because if you miss this, you're going to be uh, unable to get through the marketing uh, deception that is out there and, and, you're going, and you're not going to be able to select a process that's going to serve you and your family well. These disinfection byproducts are, are, are almost, it's a very descriptive term, because they exist as a result of disinfecting the water with the most common chemicals, typically chlorine. And what happens, and what they didn't realize for nearly a century, was that these disinfectants, such as chlorine, react, chemically react, with natural organic matter in the water. Now, this natural organic matter in the water typically comes from just the vegetation, and then the water has passed through the ground, and it's flowing in the stream, and leaves fall in it, and grass gets in it, and it decays, and releases these or otherwise harmless chemicals known typically as humic and fulvic acid, and, and which uh, sometimes are even used in the health field to, to, to uh, foster some health problem. But when the reaction between the chlorine and the fulvic and humic acids occur, uh, and these are called group, as a group natural organic matter, a reaction takes place, and it's not a very friendly reaction. This reaction takes place, and it creates a, 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 a list of chemicals, organic in nature, and they are quite carcinogenic. It's very unfortunate that this, uh, this happens, but it is the reality. Now, the categories of these things are the most prevalent category are called the trihalomethanes. And the trihalomethanes are uh, a, a group of chemicals that uh, they're called total trihalomethanes because there's not just one of them. Often just uh, uh, written as THMs, uh, are not only carcinogenic, but also extremely difficult to remove from the water supply. And uh, a second category uh, that results from these reactions is called the haloacetic acids, which is often listed as HAAs. And then there are singular chemicals, chlorites and, and bromates that also fit into the disinfection byproduct uh, category. Now, this disinfection byproduct is not an acute uh, problem like the bacteria, where you might uh, drink contaminated water that has some protozoa in it, and you know within, within two days to two weeks, you are you are coming down with diarrhea and vomiting and many gastrointestinal problems. This is something that you can drink for years, decades, uh, you know, possibly, you know, 80 years, and, and the effects w won't uh, manifest themselves in a, in a significant percentage of the population. But there is a percentage that is going to uh, contract cancer from the constant exposure of these. So in some ways, it's, it's, it's not too different than... Uh smoking cigarettes or cell, exactly. cell phone exposure. Great, it's great analogy. And the, the exposure, unfortunately, is a three-pronged exposure because we normally think of, okay, drinking water. If I drink this water, then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be at risk to, to get cancer in, you know, 30 or 40 years. But this exposure is enhanced by the fact that there are three routes of entry for, for these contaminants. And one is the drinking route, and one is the, uh, the, the skin contact route, and one is the inhalation route. 
So when you're taking a shower or taking a bath, you have and you have these trihalomethanes and haloacetic acids in the water, you are getting exposed and they are they are putting a dose uh, of the chemical in in your body and uh, it increases further increases the risk of these chemicals. And can and so, can, can you yeah. give us a perspective to how much more toxic are these disinfection byproducts relative to chlorine? From a health standpoint, I think it's 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 it could range anywhere from thousands to an infinite uh, um, uh, infinite amount because the you know researchers and the Environmental Protection Agency really don't consider chlorine toxic at all, <laughs> and they consider uh, uh, they they consider the toxicity of disinfection byproducts as as a very serious concern and limit it in the water supply to just parts per billion range okay this is parts per billion so you can see that a water supply contains parts per million but in disinfection byproducts they don't want to see anything more than parts per billion which so is 1000 times less 1000 fold difference so at 1, a, at a difference. minimum I, ideally we should never be exposed to these at all because any exposure is is to, potentially toxic but at a minimum they're a thousand times more toxic than chlorine by conserving at a yeah. minimum yeah by conserving at a minimum okay now and also just to let you know the maximum contaminant level goal which i spoke about earlier is like this is what we wish we could do but we can't for trihalomethanes is zero Mm-hmm. There is no safe level. So uh, you're looking at something that the trihalomethanes are also related to uh, liver and kidney and nervous system problems in addition to the cancer and the carcinogenic issue. So, and and the haloacetic acids, the HAAs, are, are primarily related to uh, increased risk of cancer. 